The concept of the parasite aircraft carrier is one that has a long history. Indeed, I believe the first experiments were conducted in 1916. The idea is that a large mother aircraft carries either one or more smaller ones, which can deploy from the host to perform their own missions. The concept is generally used as a means of boosting the range or operational sustainability of the smaller aircraft, or else with the aim of offering protection to the mother ship. It has also been an idea that has been explored in theory and on occasion in reality a number of times throughout aviation history. For example, in the 1930s, the US Navy built the USS Akron class, two airships that effectively acted as flying aircraft carriers that could house and deploy up to five fighters. Another famous example is the McDonald XF-85 fighter, which was intended to be carried by B-36 bombers and who would deploy the tiny jets to protect them from enemy interceptors as they approached their intended targets deep within the Soviet Union. But these examples, along with most other attempts to create parasitic aircraft combos, didn't work particularly well, or at least not well enough to warrant full deployment. Indeed, the history of this rather niche idea is one full of experimentation, but very little practical value, and it pretty much fell by the wayside once aerial refuelling was perfected. Except, it isn't well remembered, but in fact a parasite aircraft combination did actually see combat and apparently it proved successful enough that the operators advocated for a much greater adoption of the airborne aircraft carrier for operational use. The Soviet's Zvino program, colloquially known as Zakmistrov's Circus. The origins of this date back to 1931, and started with the ideas of Vladimir Zakmistrov, a pilot and glider designer serving with the Soviet Air Force. This organisation was undergoing a huge expansion and update at the time as a way of demonstrating Soviet progress, and so Vakmistrov's rather advanced and visually catching ideas found fertile soil. His proposal was that by having several fighters rigidly attached to a bomber aircraft that served as a mothership, then a number of advantages were possible. At takeoff, the combined output of all of the respective power plants could allow for heavier combined payloads to be carried. The smaller fighters would also now have much greater potential range, especially if they could draw fuel from the host bomber. This would allow them to act as escorts for their host, allowing for fighter cover to go right to the heart of the target area. Certainly, the Soviet authorities liked the idea, and the first flight of the new concept aircraft combo flew in December 1931, just six months after Vakmistrov proposed it. This, the Zvino-1, utilised a Tupolev TB-1 heavy bomber as mothership while carrying two Tupolev I-4 fighters over its wings, with the fighters modified into monoplanes as their lower wings were not needed for takeoff anymore and just added drag to the whole affair. There was one hiccup in this first flight when the crews messed up the order of release for the clamps holding one of the fighters, which led to it detaching prematurely, fortunately without serious consequences, but the second fighter was released correctly, and broadly speaking, the idea seemed to work. Further development work led to an improved version of the Zvino-1, which changed out the I-4 fighters for a couple of Polykarpov I-5s that had better performance and were replacing the I-4s in service, with this configuration flying in 1933. This was followed by a further change, which created the 1B which fitted an I-5 over the aircraft's fuselage, assumably for checking how this would affect flight characteristics. The success of the experiments also led to other new aircraft being allocated for conversion and trials, and in August 1934, the Zvino-2 flew. This took a Tupolev TB-3 heavy bomber, then one of the most advanced aircraft flying, and fitted it to carry three I-5s, two over the wings and a third over the fuselage. Though notionally an increase in the deployable aircraft, in fact the fuselage mounted I-5 seems to have been a bit of a pain to load and launch, and ultimately had its wings and tail removed so as to act as an additional engine for the mothership. But with continuing support, the next iteration of the Zvino, the 3, was soon built. This changed things up by switching to carrying two fighters under the wings of the TB-3 instead of above them. And selected for the parasite fighter role was the Grigorovich IZ. This rather odd and interesting aircraft was a monoplane which was armed with a single machine gun and two single shot 76mm recoilless guns. This setup, however, proved faulty and actually resulted in the entire type's only fatal accident, which seemed surprising considering the inherent dangers of launching aircraft from another fast moving vehicle. 
The new layout required the fighters to adjust their aircraft's locking posture after takeoff, and during this, one of the pilots misjudged the amount of stick needed and smashed his cockpit into the bomber's wing. The incident killed the unfortunate pilot, but the Zvino 3 was able to make a successful emergency landing despite the damage. I don't know if there was a fourth model, but in March 1935, the Zvino 5 took to the air. This sought to examine the possibility of carrying an aircraft under the fuselage, which could only be achieved with the two aircraft taking off separately and then docking whilst flying. And it worked, with an IZ actually managing to clamp onto the Zvino whilst in flight. The follow-up Zvino 6 and 7 sought to further test the ideas of underwing carriage, with the Zvino 6 having two I-16 monoplane fighters attached before takeoff to a TB3, while the 7 took this further by fitting trapeze arrangements that allowed the I-16s to attach while flying, allowing them to launch from the Zvino, then return to their mother craft when they had performed their mission. This all led to one of the only practical, though I use the term loosely, airborne aircraft carriers to ever fly. The Zvino Aviamatka. This saw the TB3 fitted to carry not two fighters, not three, but five single-seat aircraft. Composed of two Polycarpov I-16s under the wings, two I-5s mounted above them, and a single IZ on an under-fuselage trapeze, the Aviamatka was literally a flying aircraft carrier. And it worked essentially, proving able to deploy and redock aircraft in flight. The idea was the Avia Matka would conduct long-range multi-aircraft patrols with one TB3 supporting possibly up to eight I-16s, then the Soviet's primary fighter. The aircraft could fly in shifts and when they needed to refuel, dock with the mother craft and draw from that aircraft's petrol tanks. This was anticipated to have allowed for six-hour patrols to be conducted by the aircraft cluster. Though it doesn't seem that the full concept was ever tried out, the docking and refueling of fighters was accomplished with Zvino 6 and 7, and so had interest remained in the idea, then it was certainly feasible. But by now it was 1937, and Vakmistrov was thinking about other uses for his invention. The Soviet Air Force had lost much of its interest in heavy bombers, instead moving to a similar doctrine as the Germans at the time, with greater emphasis on tactical use for air power. To be honest, the Soviets were pretty much correct at this point, as the technology and techniques to turn the heavy bomber into anything really more than a blunt instrument were still several years of hard combat experience away. At the time, if you wanted to accurately hit pinpoint targets, you needed dive bombers, a fact that was being demonstrated in the Spanish Civil War being fought at the time. However, dive bombers tended to be smaller aircraft with limited range, intended more for tactical rather than strategic use. But with the Zvino, Vakmistrov realised that now there existed the possibility of dive bombers being able to reach deep into enemy territory. And so he developed the final model of the programme, the Zvino SPB. This was a TB3 that had two Polycarpov I-16 Type 5 fighters mounted under the wings, but now equipped not just with their machine gun armaments, but the ability to carry a pair of 250kg bombs. This was a substantial increase in the I-16's bomb load, which was only capable of lifting off with 100 kilograms of bombs on its own power, meaning that each Zvino mounted I-16 could carry five times the type's standard loadout. Another major advantage was that the aircraft also now had a substantial range increase, being carried to their target by the TB3 before decoupling and attacking. While the I-16 was not a purpose-built dive bomber, this all meant that the SPB was a rather useful precision strike aircraft, especially for the day and the age. The other advantage was that the conversion basically used older aircraft and gave them a new lease of life, as the TB3 was recognised as heading towards obsolescence already, and the I-16 Type 5s also being replaced by better models. And as the concept seemed to work pretty well, and utilised aircraft that weren't particularly useful otherwise, there was a fair bit of enthusiasm for the SPB, and 40 conversions were ordered. Vakmistrov was even asked to examine the possibility of using current production aircraft like the new PE-8 heavy bomber for use as Zvino aircraft. But the period was one of huge disruption for the Soviet military, due to Stalin's paranoia, and his purge of the high command threw many plans into disarray, including procurement of the Zvinos. Ultimately, six service Zvino SPBs were built, based off Tupolev TB3s for the motherships and with 12 Polycarpov Type 24 
I-16s converted for usage as their parasite fighter bombers. These entered service in 1940 with the 2nd Special Squadron of the 32nd Fighter Regiment based on the Crimean Peninsula, and the new aircraft were soon rejoicing under the nickname of Shubikov Circus, a nod to the UNIX commander. As a result, these Zvenos were available for combat service when the Soviet Union was invaded by Germany and their Romanian ally in June 1941, and they were very soon able to prove their worth. On July the 26th, just over a month after the beginning of the attack, two Zvino SPBs took off carrying their four bomb-laden I-16s with the Romanian oil depot at the port city of Constanta, their target. They approached to within 25 miles of the Romanian coast and deployed their attack aircraft. And though the attack took place in broad daylight, the fact that these were small fighter types completely threw off the air defences. After all, small single-seat fighter bombers were well out of range from being able to launch an attack so far from Soviet air bases, and so the air defences seemed to have assumed that the aircraft must have been friendly. They received a rude shock when the four I-16s swooped down and dropped their bombs into the oil facility, and then, while the ACAC crews scrambled for their guns, the I-16s simply flew away, all returning under their own power to their base. The attack, though a small affair, showed that the Svinos had a role to play, and so other raids were planned, largely on tricky targets that heavy bombers couldn't hit successfully. The primary target was the King Carol I rail bridge that crossed the Danube, which in addition to being a critical logistic link, also carried an oil pipeline that supplied the Axis war effort. Two raids by Zvenos in August saw them inflict significant damage on this important target. In total, the Zvenos conducted more than 30 missions between them, hitting a number of critical targets with a precision that conventional bombers couldn't achieve. During these missions, it is reported that only a single I-16 was lost to enemy action, but the little fighters claimed two BF-109 fighters themselves as they could act in their original roles once they had conducted their bombing attacks. Indeed, so useful were the unusual combos, proving that Admiral Kuznetsov himself is reputed to have asked Stalin for more conversions to be made. But the situation was deteriorating fast, and the losses suffered by the Soviet Air Force meant that other missions and requirements took priority. It isn't recorded exactly when the Zvenos ceased operations, but certainly by 1942 they were no longer operating as carriers, and with the loss of Crimea to the Germans at around this time, assumably were destroyed in the fighting, with any further records destroyed also in the chaos. But they certainly represent an innovative and intriguing footnote in aviation history.